Blimey. No, I don't think, oh, I'm screwed up, I must write a song about that. It doesn't happen like that. It's just a, a lack of, of people liking what you do. It's not a secret of anything. It's just doing the best you can and, and putting everything you've got into it and hoping people will like it. There's no real secret to that. Either people do like it or they don't. As long as people know about it, they have to know that you exist, which is a very important part of, if you're somebody new who's starting out in pop music, everyone has to know you exist. And once they know you exist and they hear what you have to offer, either they like you or they don't. And if they don't like you, which happened to us in America, when we, people knew about us, but they didn't like us. They didn't just buy records until satisfaction which was a really big group. This isn't the first generation that's questioned the moral values of the last generation. But it's the, I think it's one of the first generations which has not had to worry about the material things. Because if you're, if you're hungry, you haven't really got much time to worry about morals. I mean, when I say morals, I mean like fighting wars and whether this is right or that's right for society to do that. If you're hungry, and if, you, if your stomach's full of food, you can start worrying. Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones is going to join us by phone today. Tell me, Bri, uh, where do you boys find the best audiences? Best audiences? Well, they're pretty much the same. I think we're, we're very fond of American audiences and English audiences, European audiences. They don't vary a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the percentage of boys and girls vary slightly, but they're all, you know, I couldn't single out anywhere in particular and say that, you know, that, that country sort of always produces great audiences. Sometimes, doesn't a record have a particular feeling specifically for a boy or a girl? Not really. I mean, it may happen, but I don't think it, you can generalize. It may happen in certain instances, but I don't think you can generalize. Well, Brian, do you think that boys buy as many records as girls? Yes, I think so, yes. Yeah, in many places more, I think. Well, I know for a fact everybody buys yours. And now my thanks, Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones, for talking with us today.
Stones in the 60s Deep Dive series. Today I'm going to be talking about their fifth UK studio album, Between the Buttons. Now, Aftermath obviously had been a huge breakthrough for the Stones that established Keith and Mick as legitimate songwriters on par with Lennon and McCartney. And Between the Buttons saw them moving further away from the comfort zone of R&B, soul, and blues and more into psychedelia and baroque pop. Again, it's an entire album of Mick and Keith originals. You also had Brian Jones, who was once again introducing more instruments into the mix. Dulcimer, marimba, glockenspiel, recorder, vibraphone, dulcimer, kazoo. This would be the last album that Brian Jones would make a meaningful contribution to. You can argue he still had some influence in the Satanic Majesty session, but this was the last album that bears a significant Brian Jones imprint. Drugs were starting to now enter into recording sessions. Whereas the recording sessions for previous albums had been squeezed in between tours and other commitments, the Rolling Stones would take the last few months of 1966 to finish the album. They had done some work over the summer of 1966 at RCA Studios over in Los Angeles. They laid down the backing track for six songs. They went on tour again, and then they resumed recording sessions, this time at Olympia Studios in London, and they would finish the album there. And it was very much a party atmosphere. Whereas previously, the Stones had drawn influences from their early rock and roll heroes, their blues idols. Now they were drawing lyrical influence from Bob Dylan, musical influence from the Beach Boys, the Kinks, the Beatles, some of the other psychedelic bands that were around. And this album has less of a rock and roll feel and more of an art rock vibe to it. This is the most English album that the Stones would record. This would also be the last album that Andrew Luke Oldham would produce. The Stones were already beginning to distance themselves from Andrew Luke Oldham, who was a very larger-than-life personality. 
And much like the Beatles found they were needing Brian Epstein less and less, the Stones were also finding that they were needing their manager less and less. They didn't need their image crafted. They didn't need him to be producing their records. They had learned a lot over the last couple of years in terms of production and recording techniques. And Andrew Lou Goldham was kind of becoming a pain in the ass to the Stones. And it all culminated in January of 1967. The Stones made an appearance on London at the Palladium. And it was a show featuring all of the biggest British stars back in early 1967. And at the very end, the Stones were supposed to, with all the other artists, stand on this revolving stage as everybody clapped. It was a big to-do. And the Stones refused to come out. They thought it was beneath them. They thought it was cheesy. And they just didn't want to do it. And they got a dressing down from Andrew Lou Goldham. How dare you! And it really rubbed Mick and Keith the wrong way. And so already the seeds of discontent were beginning to be sown as far as Andrew Lou Oldham was concerned. The U.S. version of Between the Buttons is fairly similar to the U.K. track listing. But again, I'm going to say I prefer the U.S. version of Between the Buttons for the inclusion of the Let's Spend the Night Together and Ruby Tuesday single. She would never say where she came from Yesterday don't matter if it's gone While the sun is bright Or in the darkest night No one knows she comes and goes Goodbye, Ruby Tuesday Who could hang her name on you When you change with every new day Still I'm gonna miss you Don't question why she needs To be so free She'll tell you it's the only way to be She just can't be chained To a life where nothing's gained And nothing's lost At such a cost There's no time to lose, I heard her say Catch your dreams before they slip away Dying all the time Lose your dreams and you will lose your mind in life unkind Now, the songs that U.S. record buyers did not get were Please Go Home and Backstreet Girl, which I like both those songs, but they don't hold a candle to Let's Spend the Night Together and Ruby Tuesday, let's be honest. 
So for the most part, the records sounded pretty similar on both sides of the Atlantic. The cover photograph was taken in November of 1966 on Primrose Hill in North London. The photographer was Jared Mankiewicz, who had shot the cover of Out of Our Heads. The shoot took place at 5.30 in the morning after an all-night recording session at Olympia Studios, and so the Stones were very bleary-eyed and tired. Probably the last thing they wanted to do was be out on a cold November morning taking a photograph. But the photographer said that he wanted to capture the ethereal, druggy feel of the time. And he actually added Vaseline to the camera lens to give it that foggy effect around the edge of the photograph. But probably, this is my favorite Rolling Stones album cover. It reminds me a lot of Beatles for Sale, if the Beatles looked like they were high and drugged out of their minds. Now, how do I feel about the album? Well, I don't like it as much as Aftermath. And I remember the first time I heard it, my reaction was pretty similar to the first time I heard Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. I just wasn't that enthusiastic about it. It sounded a little too different than the Rolling Stones that I was comfortable with. But after repeated listenings, now it has grown on me. But like I say, it's a very English-sounding album. And while it's nowhere near as great as Aftermath, it's still an enjoyable record if you give it a chance. Okay, so let's get into the songs on Between the Buttons. The album kicks off with Yesterday's Papers, one of the most curious choices for an opening track on a Stones album. Yesterday's Paper is kind of a diss track directed at Mick Jagger's former girlfriend, Chrissy Shrimpton, who was the sister of model Jean Shrimpton. And it has all the vitriol that he directed at the woman in Under My Thumb. And it's about as brutal a put down as you can come up with. Basically comparing his girlfriend to a discarded newspaper. There's Brian Jones on vibraphone, Jack Nietzsche on harpsichord. It has a very ethereal, kind of dreamy quality to it, which is very much at odds with the lyrics. I like this song a lot. I just wish it weren't the album opener. That's one of the reasons why I like the U.S. version better, because Let's Spend the Night Together is a perfect album opener. Yesterday's papers Who wants yesterday's gun? Who wants yesterday's papers? Nobody in the world My obsession is a bit of psychedelic rock. You've got that heavy fuzz guitar from Bill Wyman. A real claustrophobic feel to this song. This happens to be Brian Wilson's favorite Rolling Stones song of all time. He was actually present at the recording session. I like this one a lot too. Maybe not as much as Brian Wilson, but it's still a great song. The next track is Backstreet Girl, one of the most gorgeous, loveliest songs about a one-night stand. More vibraphone from Brian Jones and harpsichord from Jack Nietzsche, but there's also an accordion 
which gives the song such a sweet, romantic kind of a flavor. I don't want you to be high. I don't want you to be down. Don't want to tell you no lie. Just want you to be around. Please come right up to my ears. You will be able to hear what I say. Don't want you out in my world. Just you be my backstreet girl. Even though in the lyrics, basically, Mick Jagger is telling his partner to beat it, get out of here. I'm only using you to fulfill my carnal needs, but it's still a lovely song. Connection is a drug song about a drug deal, which is very interesting considering just a few weeks after this album was released, the Stones would be busted at Keith Richards Redlands Estate. The arrangement here is very stripped down. There's really not much here. The production is a bit weak. It's basically just bass, drum, guitars, and piano, which three albums ago wouldn't have been that big a deal, but now it just seems a little underwhelming. But it's a catchy tune. Arrangement aside, I do like this one. She Smiled Sweetly is another gorgeous song. I love that organ that opens the track. The lyrics are unusually affectionate and sentimental. And I like the way Jagger sings it. He doesn't usually have this kind of vocal inflection, but it works well for the song. Yeah, this is one of the standout tracks for me on this record. I really like this one a lot. Why do my thoughts bloom so large on me? They seem to stay for day after day And won't disappear, I've tried every way But she smiles sweetly She smiles sweetly She smiles sweetly And says don't worry Of her that keeps her peace most every day and won't disappear, my hair's turning gray. But she smiles sweetly, she smiles sweetly, she smiles sweetly, and says, Don't worry. Calm Collected is a bit of dance hall tomfoolery. From that opening cheesy piano to the kazoo solo, Jagger putting on this upper class twit vocal. 
Yeah, there's all kinds of bells and whistles on this song. I don't mean to dismiss it as kind of like a novelty song, but it just seems a little goofy. They're definitely having fun with this song. And when I talk about there was a party atmosphere in the studio, you get the sense with this song. It's almost like an anything goes kind of a vibe. All Sold Out opens side two, and it has more of that fuzz guitar from Bill Wyman. This is one of the few straightforward, hard-rocking songs on the record. And a song like this, you can appreciate the Bob Dylan influence that was creeping into Jagger and Richard's lyrics. And the piano playing also stands out for me on this particular song. I like everything about All Sold Out. It's a little more like the classic Stones with a bit of psychedelia thrown in. Why put the sadness inside of you? Why be so matter of fact? Why put this one bit of hope in you? And you sold me out on that side. I hope that you're having fun with me. There's not much left to attack hey, hey. I hope that you're nearly done hey, with hey. me You sold me out of last time Go Home is like Bo Diddley on steroids. Total acid, psychedelic rock freak out. They're pulling out all the stops, trying to make this as trippy as possible. This and Backstreet Girl wound up on the Flowers compilation in the U.S. People in the U.S. got to hear this a couple months after the Between the Buttons album came out in the U.K. I think it's a cool track. I don't miss it necessarily off Between the Buttons, and I feel like it slots well there on the Flowers album.
mistaking the Bob Dylan influence on who's been sleeping here from the acoustic guitar to the harmonica to Jagger's lyrics and his vocals. It's a bit of folk rock, but they pull it off pretty well. Not my favorite track on the album, but there's a lot to appreciate here. What you say, girl, you see what is wrong You must be joking, you was led along But the butler, the baker, the laughing cavalier So tell me now See that night I, I was doing Doing something right Oh, the soldier, the sailor And then there's the three musketeers yes. They tell me now Who's been sleeping I've always thought as complicated as kind of being a sister song to my obsession. They both have the same psychedelic, trippy vibe, more fuzz bass guitar. It's a cool rock song. Nothing that's going to make you forget about Aftermath, but it is definitely a song of 1967. There's no other era where the Stones would have put out anything remotely like this. Amanda Jones is the Rolling Stones writing a garage rock version of a Chuck Berry song. Definitely one of the highlights of the album. This song kicks ass. You can tell they're having a lot of fun on it. You can tell they're having a lot of fun with it. Keith chiming in on backup vocals. This one really is fun, and I think it could have been a single. Of all the songs on the UK version of this album, I think this one probably had the most hit potential. It's a great overlooked Stones rocker. Down and down she goes
Don't you realize the money invested in you? Hey girl, you just got to find someone who really for your family. Then the last track is more dance hall buffoonery. I'm not trying to slight the song. I mean, it is what it is. It just sounds really goofy. Keith joins in on the vocals for crying out loud. I think there's a tuba on this song. It's just crazy the amount of instruments on this album. Something happened to me. Something also groovy. Something happened to me yesterday. He don't know if it's right or wrong. Maybe he should tell someone. He's not sure just what it was. Or if it's against the law Something Overall, a decent album A better than average album A very good album I'll say that Alright, hope you've enjoyed this deep dive Let me know your thoughts on the album And thank you for watching